Of all the time I've been living in Portugal, I thought I've seen everything. Turns out, I was wrong. I've heard whispers of the Dauntless who've gone far beyond the far-flung corners of the European continent, beyond the boundless seas. Whispers of a hidden paradise that exists, about a glorious Eden located right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, an archipelago of nine islands that are celebrated as by far Portugal's best-kept secret. For too long, life has prevented me from coming here. And finally, the time has come. And I've wasted not a second longer to see for myself what the secret is all about. This world where nature is at its rawest, nature at its purest, an absolute force to be reckoned with. And in my own short life so far, one that's in a foolish, admittedly misguided pursuit of something pure, I was proven wrong. It exists. These Azores Islands are truly some of the most inspiringly beautiful, unadulterated places I've been on this planet we call our home. I find the Azores, for the lack of a better word, moving. Personally, these islands poignantly remind me of my childhood, a time spent in a different archipelago, the other end of the world, the Philippine Islands, my country and birth. And no matter how much I wrestle with the idea, the Azores Islands, with its volcanic features, unspoilt nature and its relationship with the ocean, this place feels familiar. It feels like home. These islands are born from the sea, raised from the tectonic plates of the Atlantic, and when viewed from the plain above, they look like emerald jewels in an ocean of sapphire blue. This is a world of such immense natural beauty, a world of volcanoes, craters and calderas, fumaroles emitting geothermal heat, resulting in hot springs and thermal pools. This is a land of cavernous caves, stunning waterfalls and lakes, and dark sandy beaches. A place of such profound stillness and yet of constant changing weather. A place where you can unplug from the world, immerse into the energy of nature, drive through beautiful sights and even hike along the greenest forest imaginable and be rewarded with extraordinary views. This is a true adventurer's dream and if this is your kind of destination, come with me as I'll show you why you should wait no longer to explore and dive deep into the improbably dramatic islands of Azores. On this trip, we visited two islands of this archipelago, São Miguel, the largest of all these islands, and then the second largest and the youngest of them all, the dark, volcanic, UNESCO-listed island of Pico. São Miguel is also called Ilha Verde, or the Green Island, and you'll understand this immediately as soon as you get out of the airport and hit the road. Everything around you is just so lush and so green punctuated with those colorful hydrangeas that have now become symbolic and part of the flora of his orders. During our stay on his island, we base ourselves in Ponta Delgada, the largest city in the island and kind of the de facto capital of his orders. The Portuguese have been on these islands since the 15th century, and today the Azores is considered one of the two autonomous regions of Portugal, alongside the Madeira Islands. This city has over 500 years of history, and it's evident in the city's facades and cobblestone streets. Most striking of all are the whitewashed buildings punctuated with dark basalt rocks, emblematic of the volcanic architect of this place. We visited a few cultural, religious and historical touchstones here, and you'll soon realize that this is a city of Baroque churches and convents, and some of them are beautifully and richly decorated inside. Especially this chapel. It's worth seeing for the azulejos alone. 
You certainly won't run out of visiting churches here, as there are plenty of them in the city, but Ponta Delgada offers so much more. It's a modern city with a waterfront that bustles with life and commerce. We spent some time gathering our bearings here, soon immediately plunging into the local gastronomy, including eating the staple diet here. Lapish or limpets, and a mejoash or clams, which are must-haves when you're in these islands. And paired with a fresh Azores white wine, it just can't get any better. We tried another Portuguese restaurant here called Atashka and tried out the amazing morcela or blood sausage with local pineapples and also tasted the tuna tata. And while there's plenty of Portuguese restaurants to choose from, there's also an international culinary scene in Ponta Delgada. We went to Otaka, where Azorean ingredients meets Japanese cuisine. We tried their chicken tatsuta and brown buttered Azorean fish finished with this delightful berry sorbet. Let's not forget, this island, São Miguel, is famous for cheese. The most famous type has matured for at least nine months, sourced from the milk of, suffice to say, some happy, free-grazing cows on this island. In Ponta Delgada, you can visit O Rei dos Queijos for some quality cheeses, and Príncipe dos Queijos for even more cheeses and other local delights. We also could not help but explore the farmer's market here with local produce, Azurean fishes and pineapples touted as some of the sweetest pineapples in the world. And once we've seen much of Ponta Logada, it was then time to hit the road and explore the wonders of this magnificent island. First, we headed east of the island to Furnish, the geothermal heart of São Miguel. This is where some of the famous hot springs and thermal pools are located, a place where fumaroles are simmering and springing forth from the calderas of the earth. On the way there, we stopped by this neo-gothic chapel perched at the edge of Furnish Lake, and we walked around to appreciate the beauty here. But the main event is located right at the other side of the lake, Calderas de Furnish. These are the fumaroles of Furnish, a fascinating geologic feature from this dormant volcanic crater, bubbling and steaming from the ground, a sweltering sight amid a breathtakingly green landscape. Be warned that earthy burnt smell of sulfur in the air can be overpowering, like the smell of rotten eggs, but it's an experience worth undertaking, precisely due to an age-old tradition that the people of Furnish have been cleverly employing throughout the ages. Underneath this hot volcanic mound of soil is a local dish, a type of Portuguese stew called cozido de Furnish, a dish that's being cooked in pots, naturally heated by this geothermal energy from the ground. Restaurants around the area have been sourcing this energy, and it's become a culinary tradition here. So we went for a hunt around the village of Furnish for this renowned stew, and we stumbled into Restaurant Omiroma, where cozido de Furnish is practically the order of the day, every day. Ordering half a dish is already good for two. Unless you're incredibly famished, then by all means, get a full portion. Stacked right in front of you is a stew made of all kinds of juicy meat, beef, chicken and pork, with added Portuguese chorizo and blood sausage. There's vegetables too. Potatoes, carrots, cabbage and even spinach. Add a heap of rice and pour ample amounts of the broth, then you'll get a full and super filling furunch meal. It's a simple yet wonderful dish with a distinctive taste and you can't really get it anywhere else. Which makes it special. I mean, it's not that often you get to eat something cooked underground by Mother Nature. Speaking of Mother Nature, while you're in Furnish, don't miss one of the most sublime botanical gardens you'll ever get to visit on this green island, Parque Terra Nostra. At once romantic and otherworldly, this lush, magical place looks like it's landscaped out of your dreams. This garden has existed for over 200 years, a brainchild of one Thomas Hickling, an American business and consul who came to São Miguel in the 18th century. Since then, it's been bought and passed down in the next two centuries, and today is the home to the Terra Nostra Hotel, and this garden is essentially a masterpiece. It costs 10 euros to get in, and that includes soaking in the iron-rich geothermal pool, naturally colored to the U of the Earth. 
And while you're done swimming, remember, there's so much to explore. Personally, the vast garden itself is the main attraction of this place, a treasure worth visiting and experiencing on this island. One more thing we wanted to experience in Furnish is to soak in natural hot springs of Posa de Dona Beja. This is undoubtedly a place to relax, unwind and immerse in the thermal waters that's naturally heated by a volcano underneath. A kind of outdoor spa where you're surrounded by the tranquil and beautiful nature of Azores. Come here to soak in the iron and mineral rich waters, where pools have varying temperatures so you can choose which suits you best. We came here outside the tourist season so the pools aren't so packed, and we actually get to relax and enjoy the therapeutic benefits of these waters. Ultimately, this place cleansed my skin and made me think just how incredible it is to soak in the volcanic thermal waters in the middle of the ocean. Right after the hot springs, we headed to a nearby beach, Praia do Fogo, to cool down in Atlantic waters. The island has black sandy beaches, another testament to the volcanic nature of this place. The water in this beach is known to be warmer, thanks to the heated hot springs underneath. Over the next few days, we roamed and roamed and explored, driving around the coast, heading to the western part of the island. But something struck us during our explorations here. If there's one thing constant on this archipelago, it's the ever-changing weather. Blue skies turn grey, what's dry and sunny turned humid and overcast. This place is a way of reminding you you're in the middle of the Atlantic. You can only do so much with the given weather. We tried going up to Setsidaj, perhaps Azores' most famous landscape, and all we could see was fog everywhere. It was just impossible to see anything above the mountains. To reflect from a classic principle in the school of Stoicism, if you can't change what's around you, change that realm within you. So, instead of feeling disappointed and driving back to Ponta Delgada, we stayed on despite the fog. And it turns out, even with the mist in the mountains, there's still so much mystery and magic to appreciate in this place. As we very well know, nothing is perfect in his life. We had to give this place a second chance. So, on another day, we drove back again to this place, and this time, it felt like everything had aligned. Azores gave us exactly what we needed, a moment in the sun. This is Set Sidaj, located at the westernmost side of the island, where you can find a lovely village at the caldera of a collapsed volcano. The name Setsidaj refers to the legend of a lost kingdom, so-called Island of the Seven Cities, a Christian legend that tells of a community that fled the Iberian Kingdom during the Moorish invasion, and their ships arrived here and established a newfound Seven Cities, hence the name. Legend aside, this location is in a massive volcanic crater, containing the largest lagoon in the Azores, Lagoa de Setsidaj, which features the twin lakes, Lagoa Azul and Lagoa Verde all amounting to some of the most exquisitely beautiful sights Mother Nature could ever put together. On this beautiful day, we went hiking on a forest trail high up in the mountains to get one of the most spectacular sights in this island. First, we stumbled into Lagoa do Canario, one of the lakes in this crater, this hidden lagoon accessible from the trail. But the main spectacle is further ahead, a viewpoint named Miraduro de Grotta do Inferno, and it didn't take long for us to get there. A short climb ahead, and slowly, one of Azores' most iconic sights unveiled itself. Clearly, we couldn't hold our excitement any longer, 
This whole build-up of the last few days, hell, even a few years worth of dreaming to come to Azorish, to witness this sight alone, comes with a reward for all this patience, and it couldn't be any sweeter. This is one of the most unabashedly pure, unsport sights I've ever seen in this part of the world. Nature at its most majestic. Being here in Azores felt like hope. It made me realize that there are still corners like this in our world that's protected and left unblemished. We came here to appreciate nature and celebrate life, and nature here taught us a few things. When life doesn't go according to plan, don't lose hope. Sit things out, have patience, find enjoyment in whatever weather life throws at you, and don't easily give up. We can't control forces of nature, but we can be flexible to change our plans, change our mindset, and embrace change itself. Dare to go to places where you've always wanted to go, and if things don't happen, give it another try. You never know that blue sky might be just around the corner when your sun eventually shines on a brighter day. Next on In The Mood For Azores, we headed to Pico, this legendary mountain island, home to a formidable volcano and a UNESCO World Heritage landscape. Expect seafood gastronomy, an absolutely stunning winemaking tradition, where we sampled what touted as one of the world's greatest wines. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Azores series. Make sure you click subscribe to the channel so you won't miss an episode. Do explore the In The Mood For Life channel as well for more inspirations on your next destination.